Okay, so you can even download them, or else I'll oh, share you YouTube, YouTube link of this again if you want to. Oh, right. okay. So today we are starting with the first topic that is uh, about introduction to accounting. Okay. Okay. So first and foremost, we should learn or know what is the definition of financial reporting. See. Financial reporting is nothing but you are preparing the financial reports at the end of the year. Am I right? Yes, sir. So reporting is the uh, like uh, the final stage uh, like uh, but before this what happens is accounting. So. Under accounting what happens or like uh, there are different definitions given by different boards in the world. So there is a board called AICPA. American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. They have given their own definition, but here what we are following uh, is like uh, the, the definition given in the book. So what does the definition of financial reporting say? So financial reporting is a way of recording. So you do the recording in what journals? Am I right? Right. Yes, sir. And you do the and uh, you do the recording in journals and then you do the classification. By way of preparation of ledgers. Yes. Yes. So you record all the entries in the book called journals accounting entries. There's a way of uh, recording them. So whatever the transactions happen on daily basis, those transactions are, are written uh, as journals. So there is a way uh, of preparing journals. So we will learn that also. So you want me to start from journals today? Yes, sir. That would be better, correct? Yes, yes. So before starting the journals, I would give you some basics of double entry system. So double entry system. It is better if we start from journals today. So double entry system actually was introduced by Luca Pacioli. OK. In somewhere around 14th century. So what Luca Pacioli observed is whenever he is going to a market and he is buying something, he is paying something for that. So he understood that for everything in the world, there's a give and take, correct? There's a yes. there's a giving aspect and there's a receiving aspect. So yes. what he did is he divided the transactions which are happening on daily basis into three parts. OK, so we also say this as golden rules of double entry system. What is that called? Golden rules of double entry system. Golden rule of double entry system. Right. So what is the golden rule of double entry system? Or as per the double entry system, the accounts is classified into three types. I'll just put those three types here and explain you. Yes, sir. So first is the personal account. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, I can't see your screen. Uh... I've shared it already. Till now you can't see. No, no, I can't see it. I, uh, I was able to see. It. OK, now I can see. It. Yes. Yeah, so personal account, then comes the nominal account. And then comes the real account. So now per, these are the uh, like the the accounting is divided into or the accounts can be divided into three categories. Personal account, nominal account, real account. So what is this personal account? So here if I say person al, that means this person so this account would deal with a deal with a person, correct? It will deal with a particular person because what does this account say is and he has like introduced two indicating terms. One is the debit and one is the credit. So he has divided the transactions into these two. OK, so whatever the transactions happen, what is the transaction? Transaction is some activity which bring changes to your business, correct? Yes, yes. Sir. What what kind of changes suppose you uh, like purchase goods? So inventory is coming in your business and cash is going out of your bank account or from your counter or, or, or wherever the cash you keep. So changes are happening in your business. One account is getting reduced and one account is increasing. So these are the changes which happen in the business and those are called transactions. OK, so he has divided the transactions into two parts uh, like or two categories or two indicating terms he has like you used to indicate them. So one is debit, one is credit. So what does debit say here? Debit the receiver. 
and very easily we can relate this because person when i speak about a person a person can only be a receiver and a person can only be a giver giver right second point nominal account so debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains okay yes and then debit for real account would be debit what comes in so this kind of things have been explained there yes not really sir actually um, they, they did, I mean, they they did not explain different yeah they did not explain in that details also correct yeah 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 so when i speak about the personal account it is debit the receiver credit the giver when i speak about nominal account the indicating term debit says whatever the expenses you incur in the business you debit them or you write at the debit side and whatever the incomes which uh, you earn in the business you write them in the credit side and there's no science behind this he has just see these are the rules what is the difference between a principle and a rule principle is something which is universal rule is something which is specific am i right, right. yes sir so like every action has an equal and opposite reaction is a principle not a rule fine yes. when i give rules that means to be followed so be nothing followed. nothing much you know, you need to research in google what is this and what, there's no science behind this these are the rules to be followed that's it now right. under real account debit what comes in credit what goes out they are just categorizing the things between debit and credit okay mm -hmm. now as i told you the personal account uh, is nothing but it deals with a particular person and the common sense prevails because a person can only be a receiver and a person can only be a giver so here what i'll do is i'll write it deals with a particular person yeah. with a name so with person i mean person can be a natural person or a artificial person with natural person i mean human with artificial person i mean companies correct okay so if suppose i uh, give you an example that uh, you like uh, fatima paid uh, like 10000 rupees to uh, like uh, like uh, mr x okay so yeah. who is the receiver of cash mr x Correct. Yes. And if I say Fatima has deposited ten thousand rupees in State Bank of India, so who is the receiver there? State Bank of India. Correct? State Bank of India. Yes, sir. And and what would be the <coughs> credit entry? <coughs> the credit entry would be. Uh... Just try. <laughs> There is nothing like you should give the answer like that should be correct or wrong. Just try about it. See when you are depositing cash in the bank. Debit yeah. the receiver is the bank. What would be the credit entry? What what idea you have? Uh, Don't worry. Now, if you think that it is debit the receiver, bank and credit the giver, Fatima, it would be a wrong entry. Okay. Yeah. Because so uh, what credit would be to me only my account? No, 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 no. When it is to your account, that means money is coming to your account. Okay. Yeah. So it it doesn't go in that way. i will tell you what happens <clears throat> see when you are depositing money in the cash so mm -hmm. it is debit the receiver bank correct yeah and what is going out from your uh, like uh, account you are depositing what in the bank the cash cash so what is going out from your uh, from your account cash 10, correct 000. cash yeah. yeah so 10000 bank has received why because 10000 you have deposited correct deposited yes sir yeah so actually now what happens uh like this bank is nothing but state bank of india it's your account only so what yeah. are you what you are doing is from your cash account you are putting the money in bank account am i right mm -hmm. yes sir yeah so like uh what happens uh, like in this case is this comes under personal account concept okay and this comes under real account concept 
Now, what is this? You know, see there there can be a debit here. That debit can be this, this, this. But it is not necessary that the credit should always be the one which is which I am showing in the combination. If this is the debit, this can be the credit. If this is the debit, this can be the credit. If this is the debit, this can be the credit. Understood? Okay. Yes. What matters is debit should be every debit should have a equal and corresponding credit, but yes. the credit should not be like in the combination. Understood? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So like here, what happens is SBI bank. So SBI is the receiver and from your cash, from your bank, from your account, cash is going out. Okay. Yes. I'll just give you a small rule here. See what happens is. Uh, like uh, if you are showing any of the asset in the debit, that means the asset value is increasing. These rules are given in the textbook. I'll show you. Okay. If you are writing the asset in the credit, that means the asset value is decreasing. Understood? Yeah. So here, which here the money is going into bank account. So which account is increasing? The SBI bank. So can I write that in the debit because the asset value is increasing there, correct? The bank, yes. the bank account belongs to whom? To you or some other individual? It belongs to me. So your bank account is increasing. Your bank account balance is increasing. So where will I write that? Uh, on the credit side? No, 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 no. See, what did I say? Whenever your asset value increases, value increasing. It, should be written, it should be written in the debit, debit. side. Am I right or yes. wrong? Yes, sir. And whenever the asset value is decreasing, it should be written in the credit side. credit side. Now, what is happening is this bank account also belongs to you and this cash is at your home. This also belongs to you. But what is happening? <clears throat> the money you have 100,000 here. Yeah. From here, 20,000 you are just depositing here. OK, mm -hmm. and you have some like uh, amount here already. I, I will not go into it. Now, when you deposit 20,000 from here, this account will increase by how much? 20,000. So shall I put that in the debit? Yes. And this account is getting reduced by how much? 20,000. So shall I keep it in the credit? Yes. Now that justifies or not? Yes, sir, it does. Yeah. So if you think in that way, these are rules. If you go with the first version, which I explained you, simply you can say, yeah, this is debit the receiver and credit what goes out is cash. That's it. Yeah. So either way you are able to understand. Am I right? Yes, yes, sir. See, whenever you will be going into going into Google, you will be researching this. You will be doing a Google search. Like what I studied is like how I should interpret. So yes. you will find these both versions there. Okay, I am yes. giving you this kind of <laughs> assurance. Fine. So yes, yes. this is the ACCA books version, and that is like the version which we generally teach to students in India here. Okay. 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 When you do a CA foundation course, any CA faculty would explain you only this version. When you read, when you study for uh, ACCA under some ACCA faculty, he would explain this version. Understood? Right, right. Yeah. Yes, sir. So now uh, keeping this in mind, we will go for the second and third one and we'll do a journal question right now. OK, all right. Sir. Yeah. Just give me a second. So, so when like the exact reverse goes for liability. So if asset account increases debit, if if asset account decreases credit, if liability account increases, if liability account decreases debit, if liability account increases credit, am I right? Yes, sir. So it is exactly opposite to the asset. Fine. Now. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the first entry. Second entry is any expenditure which happens in your business. So we can uh, like, can you give me some examples of the expenses which happen in the business? Uh, the rent. Yeah, you pay the rent of the office. You pay salaries to the electricity employees. Bill. Electricity bill, printing and stationery, postage and telegram. Any expenses you have to <coughs> always put them in the debit. debit okay. Side. Yes. Yeah, and always you should put your incomes in the credit. 
fine right. so we will come to the double entry system rules given here in uh, like in your book as per that we will see what rules they have given yes sir they have changed the like new book previously chapters were like something else now the chapters are something else like yes yes i think they've changed it yeah they changed it yeah so here comes <clears throat> so this is a double entry in asset comes in the debit and uh, yeah i'll just give the rules here we can have a discussion on that yes sir These guys have explained things in very like detailed manner and in a very easy way. Uh, yes, sir. the BPP is very deep. -ish. Yeah, yeah. I think that is in there. Yeah. So these are the very simple general rules. As I said, when I speak about asset, when I when the asset value increases, it is always in the debit. Debit, yes. Sir. Okay. And if the liability decreases, it is always in the debit. And if I speak about any expenditure, right. that means if I write any expenditure, it is always in the debit, correct? Debit side, yes. They sir. did not say increase, decrease, but they clearly said expenditure. If you write, it is always in the debit side. Debit side. And if I speak about credit, so I justified even right now. When you deposited your money in the bank account, banking account has increased and your cash account has decreased, correct? Decrease, yes, sir. So one asset is increasing simultaneously, the, the, the another asset is decreasing. So asset right. yes, decrease sir. is credit. Yeah. And, uh, and income is always in the credit, correct? Okay. Yeah, this is the way you understand the questions. Now we will just see the versions in what they have explained here. And all the debit should always be equal to credit, fine? Yes, sir. So asset increase in debit, asset decrease in credit liability, uh, like it's always reverse of asset. So here if the asset increase in, is in debit, liability decrease will be in debit, correct? Debit. Yes, sir. So what can be the example of this? If you can give me. Uh, an increase in asset? Increase in asset, I have explained to you that you yes. deposited money in the bank. Yes. Any kind of liability, any kind of liability. So suppose we'll take a like a, 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 a transaction. Nah? Uh, so yes. there was a supplier who supplied goods to you, Mr. X. Uh, OK, we, I, I will just put a journal entry. Uh, let's say Mr. X. Uh, OK, I'll just put it here. Uh, purchased. Purchased goods. From Mr. X. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, worth. $10,000. Okay, so here we purchased goods from Mr. X of $10,000. Right. Did I mention in this statement anywhere for cash? No. Some goods will have some value. That's right. understood fact. But if I don't pay cash, that means I'm making a credit purchase. Isn't it? Yes. Isn't yes. It so. so what will be the entry I write for this? So Mr. X is what to me? He is my payable. Am I right? Yes, sir. So already I'm maintaining this kind of relationship with Mr. X and I am supposed to pay him 10,000 already. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm supposed to pay him $50,000 already. So mm -hmm. my so Mr. X account is already showing $50,000. I'm supposed to pay to him. Yes. Sir. I bought some $10,000 worth of goods from him. Now yes. you tell me 
I am supposed to pay sixty thousand to him or not? Yeah, you are supposed to. So what would be the entry here? The entry would be: Can I write here purchase to payables? Yes. Come on, see. Don't hesitate in like saying anything. If it's right or right, it's wrong or wrong. See, okay. purchase to purchase to payables means what? Purchase to payables means what? See, whenever you purchase goods from someone, is it an expenditure or or not? It is an expenditure. So I am writing that in the debit side. That's right. it. Yes. Sir. And see, I can tell. I'll tell you the another version of this also. Don't worry. Secondly. Yes. Already, I was supposed to pay how much to my payable fifty. Now I am supposed to pay how much? Ten more. So increase in liability comes where? It comes under debit. No, see here. Where am I pointing? It comes under credit. Yeah, so I am putting it in credit side. Am I right? Right. Yes, sir. So I'll I'll show you two versions. Don't I'll just prove you what I'm saying here. Yes, sir. So the expenditure I've put in debit and my already I was supposed to make payments of fifty thousand to Mr. X, which I did not make, which is still prevailing, and ten thousand in turn increased. So my total yes. payables are sixty to him, but this time my payables has increased. So I'm putting that in which side? In the credit side. Credit side. Okay. Now next entry. Paid thirty thousand to Mr. X. Now you see. So now I will show you the second version. What we what we teach to students in India and what n number of videos will show you whenever you like kind of research or do. So yeah. no need to go for that. I am there here. Okay. Now. Okay. So when you. Then to Mr. X, you were supposed to pay sixty thousand. Now you are paying how much to Mr. X? Uh, sixty. No, sixty. You are supposed to pay. How much you are paying? Yeah. Uh. I, so I have written thirty here. Yes, yes. Sixty in total. I am supposed to pay to Mr. X. I am now paying him thirty thousand. So that means you need to pay thirty more. I'll put entry. I'll put entry now. Did you understand the question? What I'm what I'm showing here? Yes, sir. See, Mr. X has a long history uh, of like there are historical transactions which happened between us and Mr. X. Already fifty we were supposed to pay. Ten more we have purchased the goods from them, and now the total liability is to the tune of sixty. Now what okay. happened is I am paying thirty to Mr. X. This payable which was in the credit now. Will come in debit. Why? Because the liability would decrease or increase. The liability would decrease. Of course, it will decrease. Fine. So I'll write here uh, payables in the debit. Okay. To uh -huh. cash in the credit. Your asset account is decreasing or increasing. The asset account is decreasing. Decreasing because your cash account is decreasing here from yes. cash account. Thirty thousand is going out, and uh, the payables account, which was already of sixty, okay, we paid thirty, so it is reducing by thirty. Am I right? Yes, yes, sir. So decrease in liability comes where? It comes under credit. Uh, debit. Debit. And decrease in asset comes where? Credit. Credit. That's what I wanted to explain you. Understood? Yes, yes, sir. Can you put these two entries in your book? Yes, sir. So we'll try to justify what the boxes they have given by creating some some examples, okay? And after you note this, I'll give you the Indian version also. So whatever okay. is easy for you, you understand, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. I hope the lecture is not that uh, boring, isn't it? So. So uh, no no no, it's not, sir. Yeah yeah, you're understanding. Thank you. I should note this down, right, sir? Please, yeah. Why? Because see, the studies which happen should be conceptually. Okay. Right. Book yes. reading is not required. If you learn this in such a technical way, you will never forget things. Right.
Yes, sir. Yeah. Now the Indian version says, when you purchase goods from Mr. X worth ten thousand, hmm. debit what comes in. So I'll write debit. What comes in. comes in? What comes in goods in form of purchase? That is real account. Correct or wrong? Yes, yes. And credit the giver, Mr. X. Mr. X. Personal account. Concept. Correct? Yes. This is the Indian version. So the, if you understand this, okay. If you understand ACCA version, that's even okay. Now here. You paid to Mr. X. So, of course, since Mr. X is a human being, debit the receiver who? Um, Mr. X? Mr. X. Personal account concept? Yes, sir. And credit what goes out? Uh, what, what are you paying him? 10,000? Yeah, no, no, 30,000 I'm paying, no? 30,000, yes, yes, sir. Credit what goes out? Cash. So, when cash, cash goes out, it is what? Real account concept, correct? Real account concept, right, sir. So you can put it in this way also. What is more easier to you, uh, uh, Fatima? The previous version or this version? Um, I'm, I'm confused, sir. <laughs> Don't be confused. Don't worry. It's it's very simple and easy. Uh, like we are creating situations and trying to like uh, get the concept clearly. Okay? Yes. So you understood the first entry and second entry, now? Yes, yes, sir. I'll just put one question in front of you. Now, we, now you have to answer, okay? Yes, sir. So this is the entry. Mm -hmm. So this is the question. Now you ha you have to answer this. Commence business with cash. Yeah. So here also some points are given. I I'll just tell you. See here some points are given. So these are all debits. So yes. expenses uh, like any increase in the asset is debit. Any expense is debit. Any drawings is debit. Correct. Yes, sir. And these are all credits. Any increase in liability is credit. Okay. Any income is credit. Any capital is credit. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how the how it goes. So when you start business with cash, hundred thousand dollars, what would be the journal entry? So what is coming in the business? Uh, See, Fatima, you. you started a business with hundred thousand dollars you are invest yeah you are investing hundred thousand dollars what are you giving to your what are you giving to your business as capital uh hundred thousand money cash correct money yeah so so debit uh like increase in asset am i right increase in asset yes. is debit right yes sir so when cash comes in to the business it is increasing it is nothing but increase in the asset your cash account has you had a uh, you had an empty box. That box has how much now? It has hundred thousand. That is increased. Your the box which has nothing has hundred thousand right now. It has okay. nothing. That means zero dollars now has hundred thousand dollars. So your asset has increased or wrong or not? It has. It has increased. It has increased. So that is what I have put it in debit. It's Second, okay. yeah, to capital account. What is why I am writing this capital account in the credit? Because the rule says capital always comes in credit. Okay. What does the rule say? The rule says capital always comes under credit. Or else if you want to understand this in, in this way also you can understand cash account debit to Fatima capital account. Okay. So yeah. you are giving you are you are you are investing money in the business. That money has come in the form of cash in the business and that is also a capital to your business. Correct. Yes, yes, sir. So since it's a capital, I'm writing Fatima capital account. Okay. This yes. capital is also also shown in the liability side. Where is it shown? Liability side. Yeah. So it's increase credit, debit credit. Side. always credit. Yes, it is always credit. Capital is always credit. Okay. Correct. So right, yes, sir. right on this entry. Yes, sir. 
or else like it, if you see in another way debit what comes in can i write it here debit what comes in what comes in yes. debit what comes in cash correct which yes. account concept real account yes. concept and credit the giver fatima yes okay fine yes. so you can you can you understood in this way also you understood in this way also anyway you should be able to understand understood no? yes yeah please write it down i'll put more four questions right now yes Yes, sir. Yeah. Now I'm taking expenses. Okay. Yes, sir. We will cover up everything. Paid rent ten thousand dollars. Now, Fatima, if I ask you a question, what can be the entry for this? So, rent is an expense. Expense always comes where, Fatima? Uh, debit. Very good. So I write rent account debit. Yes. Two. What am I paying Fatima for this? What? Which account is getting? Which account is getting affected? The. When I pay rent of ten thousand to someone, what I give to them in their hands? The cash. Of course, cash. Yes, sir. So I had fifty thousand in my cash account. Out of that, ten thousand has gone. So this has decreased my asset or increased my asset? It has. Decreased your asset? Uh, absolutely right. It has decreased my asset. So decrease in asset comes where? It comes under uh, debit. How come? Where did I, where did I write this okay, one? Okay. No, no, no. So one second. Uh, if there is a decrease in the asset, it goes under uh, credit. Credit, of course. That's yes. the reason I've written in credit. Yes. Sir. Okay. So if you see as per our ACCA rules. Yes. ACCA rule is very clear that whenever you have an expense, put it in debit, and for expense you are paying cash. So that account is getting affected and that is decreasing. That yes. asset is decreasing. Whenever asset decreases, you write in the credit side, correct? Yes, sir. If you see in another version, debit all expenses. Yes. Sir. As per that rent, I I wrote in debit side, correct? Debit all expenses rent. Which account concept? Nominal. Nominal. And credit, what goes out? Credit what is going out? The rent. Rent is going out, but from which account? What is going out physically? Cash. Cash. Credit, what goes out? Cash. Okay. Yes, sir. Real account concept. So in either ways, I've explained you right, right on this one. Now we'll see okay. income, income case. Then I'll put some 10 questions in front of you. You have to explain me everything. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry if it doesn't come in the first day, second day, you will be very perfect. Once you again uh, see the recording. Very confusing, actually. It may be, but don't worry. Yeah. Differentiation, integration, all those things you have learned, na? So now this would be somewhat uh, like uh, Greek and Latin. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, yeah. as far as I, I mean, I have seen this, hmm. uh, the debits and credits are written on the left and right side, right? 
that is ledger i am teaching you journal right now okay so uh, in the journals you just have to write it yeah in the journals you record it in this way when okay. you do ledgers you classify them you make under t accounts like this okay okay like this are you seeing this yes yes sir so before you cannot directly make this first you have to make that then you make this okay okay sir okay see they have written here na so yes. sole trader pays 6000 in the bank account so when he pays 6000 in the bank account which account is increasing that means bank account you can take it as a cash account only okay right yes. so your asset is increasing that comes debit and capital uh, is increasing that comes in the credit correct credit Cap yes sir comes in the credit that's what now next entry uh, let's do this Sold goods worth ten thousand to Alex. You, now we have to see a journal entry for this. Okay. Okay. So now you tell me you are selling goods to Alex. Yes. Okay. And that too you are not taking any cash from Alex. Okay. So like, uh, like uh, which what what accounts would be uh, like getting affected because of this? So Alex is someone with whom you are already having some relation, mm -hmm. uh, business relation. And okay. Alex is a regular customer uh, like uh, who regularly buys goods from you. So already yes. Alex is supposed to pay us 50,000. His account is showing what? 50,000. Now still Alex has purchased 10,000 of goods from us. Mm -hmm. Now his accounts will increase by how much? By 10,000. So it will be 60,000. 60,000. So Alex yes. is nothing but what to our business? He's trade receivable. Am I right? Right. Yes, sir. So. Uh, like receivable account debit to sales account. Am I right? Yes, sir. Why I wrote this entry? Now, Alex is already a receivable for us and we still sold goods worth 10,000 to Alex. So Alex. now Alex in total is supposed to uh, like we are total the total receivable from Alex is how much 60,000. So his account has increased or not? It has. Yes, sir. So asset account increase. Am I right? Yes, sir. Debit and Debit. it is it is an income revenue sales is an income credit finished. Credit. Just make a note of this and if I go with my version uh, in mm -hmm. India debit see if i am selling goods to alex who is right. taking the goods from me alex so debit the receiver alex okay right. debit the receiver because he is a person now debit right, yes. the receiver alex so i'll write personal account concept okay so yes. and then credit what goes out credit what goes out from my business Goods in form of sales. Yes, sir. See, I'm writing both the version. So this is a real account concept. Okay, sir. Shall I keep only one or shall I explain both the things to understand? Uh, I think both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good. Nice, yeah. Students should not uh, like search comfort zone in studies. Right, they yes, should sir. learn from every angle, correct? Yes, yes, sir. The one who searches comfort zone is not fit for any professional course. Right, yes, sir. Once if you have done this, uh, it, uh, inform me. I'll put some four questions in front of you. You should explain me what is increasing, decreasing, okay? All right.
ओके नाउ यू कैन टेक योर टाइम टेल मी द आंसर्स आई विल पुट इट हियर आप अपना एनालिसिस यू कैन डू योर एनालिसिस एंड टेल मी आई विल जस्ट पुट द आंसर्स हियर ओके यस सर अह पेड द सैलरीज yeah is a uh, debit from my side see paid salaries of course where it's if it's your company if you are paying salary to your employee it's a expenditure for you correct yes sir so you put your expenses always in which side if your mm-hmm. expense increase or whatever expense you put it in which side debit side debit side that's absolutely right salary account debit and then debit. If this account is uh, like debit, which account would be credit? Uh, the employee account. No, see, don't think uh, like uh, from employee's perspective. Employee okay. is not your like it's you're seeing your from your business perspective. Yes, yes, sir. Employee will see from his own perspective from right. from his personal perspective. It's your business. Right. When you're paying salary to your employee, what are you doing? What are you giving him? Uh, the profit from. See, one employee is working in your company. You are giving something in your in his hands. Something, something. The cash. Of course. So you had. See what is happening here. You are paying salaries to your. Ah, uh, like already he is working in your company. he is working for he has to work for 12 months correct so practically we should think fatima practically you don't be very nervous and you enjoy your studies be very calm cool and don't be nervous think in a practical way how to think in a practical way come on some employees working in my company i have to pay him a 12 month salary so i have paid him 10 months salary i have paid him some salary of 10 months okay yes, Ten months happens to be like uh, like hundred thousand dollars. I'm supposed to pay him ten thousand now, so I'll pay him ten thousand. His salary account will increase, and salary account will increase in the sense it's expenditure. Salary is always where mm-hmm. debit, correct? Debit. And you are yes, which from which account the money is going out to his account? The cash. From which account? account? The cash account. So your right. cash account already had hundred like fifty thousand dollars. from that you pay 10000 to him your cash yes. account has decreased now it has become 40000 40, so now decrease in the cash account is decrease in asset am i right it comes in yes. which side credit credit side yeah to cash account so i'll write it here debit expense and decrease in asset account asset account credit okay credit. yes sir and if you take in that way debit all expenses nominal account concept because uh, like uh, i have explained you as per the double entry system and yes. credit what goes out what is going out the cash cash of course real yes. account concept account concept yeah okay so yes. you can write this in detail way your wish something if you are getting confused in both you can put it one but both the things are very easily understood right yes sir i'm like i'm like thinking i took a very comp- uh, complex chapter sir so i'm done with this one hello so can you hear me 